started to strip this down took the wings off it weren't original but Tommy still wants them so that's good so the stripping's down now the engine though definitely sounds like a good one doesn't uh, um, nice steady idle these ABFs um, suffer from um, the micro switch back here being out of um, one falling off or not working properly and the idle will roll all over the place up and down this one's got a really smooth idle um, just stripping it down I see uh, they've drilled some holes and I can tell it hasn't got the original filter so I'm just going to quickly have a look and see what someone's um, put in here oh looks like a pipe across potentially yeah it does need to be clean okay and the airbox is standard it's very small uh, velocity stack which uh, I'll modify okay so we continue stripping this down just loosened off their uh, the top mount with the air gun so we're going to remove all the 5100 and stuff like this so we can prep it all up paint it poly polyurethane it and get it fit onto the convertible Wishbone gone the hub's gone dry shaft's gone today uh, the anti-roll bar will come back for but we can at least uh, get the rest of it started on this side here in the UK due to the bad weather and salt the bolt actually snapped halfway through so I'm gonna have to cut the subframe chisel off the bolt the nut and, uh, and then weld it back up again bit of a pain so this pile here I've just well, bits I've had laying around and bits from the car as well Literally headlights, rear lights, plastic trims, door seals, carpets, loads and loads of little bits. There's a guy I know who's, uh, who for some reason collects these Mark III bits and just uh, stock, is stockpiling them for, for I don't know when. And um, so yeah, I've sold all this lot of bits and pieces uh, for £100. So, so that's the first £100 uh, recouped off the car. So the car stands now at 400. Uh, I've got a few people interested in a few other little bits. Boxes. This is the convertible 3.5, eight valve, which is basically more or less the same. It's got the snorkel at the front, the hot air. It comes off the manifold for the idle valve, or for this, in this case for the EGR. And inside it's got a velocity stack it's got a, a fairly big chamber at the top for volume this one is off a TDI um, 90 they're the same as the 110 AFN this is AZ uh, 1Z sorry um, smaller volume at the top it's got a shorter velocity stack uh, the cold feed pipe is actually smaller at the front than the 2 litre 8 valve and also the inside is small as well but it doesn't have no, no hot air uh, to feed the box um, then we have the ABF one which has again the the heat from the manifold it's got a fairly small cold feed pipe uh, this owner made the mistake of uh, drinking holes, sounded great, but he's just sucking in hot air from the, from the engine bay, which doesn't really help because the air sensor literally sits air temp sensor there and the warmer that gets starts to retard ignition. So, and as you can see, the top, top of the box has a larger volume for air, but on the inside, a very odd looking 
velocity stack is really really small it's obviously to, to restrict uh, sound and also uh, top end performance then we move along to I think this is an early early VR one and what's different about this one is it has no shape at all on the bottom box for the return of the exhaust to warm it up you have an air temp sensor here which is fine it's not as small the volume as the it's the same as the 8 valve actually the top part of the volume velocity stack as well is a lot larger um, so I think what we're going to use in the 8 valve and potentially the 16 valve will be this VR bottom box um, with this snorkel which is bigger than the ABF and the diesel diesel one so we'll use this bottom bit of the ABF for the 8 valve and the 16 valve for now um, and Unfortunately, this the shape of this doesn't fit. Um, we're well, not going to use this now anyway, but this top half I'll modify that later with a larger velocity stack. But for now, in the in the eight valve, I think I will use this shorter velocity stack from the diesel and this one. So it gives it more volume of air and a, and a slightly, slightly shorter run. On inspection, when we received this, uh, we could see signs of uh, of water leak, and it's quite common to these flanges. Uh, they go also uh, due to it not holding pressure. The water boils at a much higher temperature, uh, and it overflows from the cap as well. So um, we have a replacement part. And there's a eight pounds uh, from GSF, so uh, we're just going to go and replace this. Pretty simple, really. Just routine maintenance because obviously this engine is going to go into the Mark II, so uh, might as well get it done now because this is obviously a daily. So this car actually part of the project actually is juggling and getting uh, getting it running or doing the modifications and uh, so, yeah, straightforward job to remove this. Really, so you can see signs of where it was actually running down the block. And there's the old part and the new part it comes with new seals as well. So now we're just going to put the, the blocker in, coolant temp switch in, bolt it on. It's like a five minute job. So let's go press on with that now. Front cross member. Now uh, I can't remember how much I picked these up for. Powerflex, race blacks, uh, 15 or 17 pounds. They were new on oh, eBay. Uh, somebody bought them, never used them, so I sold them. I think these retail normally at 45 or 50 pounds, so 15 pounds was a bargain. So I don't normally replace these, but uh, normally because, uh, well, normally now, because uh, it's on the convertible. This uh, front cross member actually does tie the chassis legs together, so in theory, this should actually make a difference on the convertible where there's a lot more flex. So here's the old one, and the one there, uh, it came off the, uh, the Donor 16 valve. It's all uh, half flexed. So let's see what difference this actually makes. Um, so like I said, I don't really change these, but uh, I'm just wondering if, uh, as I came up for a really good price, and it's convertible, which does have a hell of a lot more chassis flex, if this will uh, stiffen up uh, the chassis legs at the front. Okay, so we're just gonna bolt this on, and I'll take it for test drive. So we did the, uh, that fr front cross member off the test drive, just got back, and um, yeah, it uh, definitely feels a bit tighter. Steering feels a bit more responsive in the corners. And just, just generally, just steering feel has improved with that uh, those front um, Powerflex black front uh, cross member bushes. So now we're gonna do um, 
coilovers that came off the, that donor car, that's at APs, um, and also start the conversion of 5 by 100. Um, a lot of people don't maybe realize these 3.5s are running a 4 by 100, kind of a Mark II, Mark III variant setup. But the 3.5 actually runs a Mark IV rear caliper, uh, as standard, with a uh, kind of a VW made their own conversion for the Mark II, Mark III style rear beam uh, with the brake hose. So that's a nice little upgrade for someone who's doing a Mark II or Mark III and wants Mark IV calipers. Um, you can just get the brake line from uh, the 3.5 convertible. Um, looking at this, pushes as much as you can see in there really really bad so uh, we're gonna put the uh, that 60 valve rear beam which has got the the plus bushes on them which is slightly larger uh, we're gonna power flex those as well and also the GTI actually for some reason the convertible even though they're discs on the back all four stud and five stud uh, Mark 3's and Mark 2's the rear beam has the anti-roll bar in it for some reason, these uh, this uh, the 3.5 cabs don't have the rear bit, the anti roll bar in the beam. Um, so as you can see, right on this side, we've already put the uh, the hubs on, or well, the discs for the 5100 for stage one. We will go actually vented, but we'll do it on the other beam once the other beams are uh, got power flex bushes and stuff and refurbed. And these are the APs; they just refurbed and stuff. Give them a bit of paint and they were all seized up. Just got to copper grease this now so it doesn't thing. And these are the wheels that are going to go on Polo Dune or the Polo Cross, as it's known in Europe. Um, 7.5 by 17s. Um, I think it'll be quite nice in here. Give them a bit of a refurb, previous badges. And, uh, okay, so let me just crack on with this. Okay, so I've just given it a, a wash. And uh, this is how it stands actually at the moment because obviously one thing that hasn't been said yet about this cheap project is that it's a daily so I need it every day so it can't be off the road so what's been done to recap so far the coilovers the APs have been cleaned up and de-seized and all greased up and painted uh, 5 100 rear discs, new pads. Well, the pads and discs were new on the on the donor car. They've gone the back to fit the, the wheels of choice, um, and that's how it runs now. Um, today we've got the hubs, the drive shafts, and the wishbones, and the anti roll bar off. So that then this week I can, uh, in between other projects, prep the. Um, Put polyurethane bushes in the wishbones, paint up, paint up all the bits and pieces, get it all looking as good as it can be, and uh, 